So I'm out again. This time I've come up, I think for the first time since I started the channel, come up to Snowdonia. Right at the southern end of it, on Kader Idris. Although I'm not actually going up Kader Idris itself, so to speak, where the hut and the trig point is. I'm going to aim for somewhere a little less popular, but on the same hill. <laughs> oh, you'll see what I mean when I get there. There's opposing forecasts. The MWIS say there's going to be gusts up to 40 miles an hour on the tops. Met Office say 27. I'd chosen to believe the Met Office and uh, driven three hours up here. Give it a go. Quite a spectacular valley. I must go out the other side one day. Kader is an area that I know very well. It's one of the first big hills I ever went up on my own, away from the Brecon Beacons. I'm beginning to think the uh, 40 mile an hour gust might be the more accurate one. So I'm a bit concerned. I'm more concerned about what's in front of me now. According to the map, it goes this side of the fence, it goes off to the right for a bit and comes back round to the left, but where it goes up over that cliff, I have no idea. Oh, no. I was talking to some guys on down the hill there. Um, they've been here all day. This is the Mac Loop, in case you didn't know. So the planes fly down through this valley. Uh, I don't know how often, but they said they'd seen four all day and they'd been here um, since nine o'clock and I think it was about five by the time I was talking to them. So very dedicated guys. So if you know what that plane was, let me know. I'm in for a penny, I suppose. A bit scrambly now, so there are people about who would film themselves climbing up this and then come back down and get the camera. No, not going to happen. I was thinking I'd come back down the same way in the morning, but maybe not. Views are really opening up now. I don't know what you can see. I don't know the names of all those, I'm afraid. I'm knackered. <laughs> I was just looking over the other side, and there's a pitch over there. With a roar running up to it. And top of that cliff, there's some pitches. So that might be my next goal after this one. We'll see. Just bog trotted across that. You see going down. Now we're going back up again. I've been looking for flat bits on on the way, just in case the wind is horrendous up there. But anything that's flat is also basically covered in, well, either covered in bilberries and tuffets, or is a bog. <laughs> Monoth Moyle. Job done. Munoth Moyle. There we go. It's Barmouth down there. That lump, first lump is Cadder itself. You can just, well, I can see the outline of the hut on the top. I'm not going over there. Look at these cliffs. Let's get a bit closer, but not too close. As you can see, there's. Hmm. 
pretty airy place. All right, let's get in this shelter a minute at the wind. Well, the wind isn't gusting to 40. It is quite strong. I'm not going to be able to perch right on the top because it's basically, as you see, it's all rocks. So I'll have to go down the side a bit and try and find something flat enough to put a tent up. I will check the uh, forecast again before I do that. Now. <laughs> Feeling my age. <laughs> All right, I got my pitch. I'll show you in a minute. But first, let's just take a wonder. So I'm just off the summit of Munith Moyle and <laughs> I was going to show you Cader Idris itself, but uh, let me, <laughs> I will show you. Look, there she is, all covered in cloud. It's not the worst view in the world now though. I think the wind's shifted a little bit. That's the Barmouth estuary down there. And then down in there is Dolgethley. Aaron's over there. And there's the pitch. I, uh, I put it up, didn't quite get it lined up with the wind, so I just moved it around a bit. Now the moving, wind's moved again, but you know. So I'll get myself set up and then uh, get the kettle on, I think. Oh, right. So I'm all set up. Let's just adjust that. Um, tent's up. I've got my food, cooker, water all down in this side. Rucksack now empty, stored out to the other side. The weather's looking a bit iffy, actually. The clouds are coming down and they're, they're zooming by. But I don't know whether there's some shelter here in some way or another, I'm not sure. Every so often there's a huge whack of wind, but you know, that's fine. Anyway, I'm getting cold. You can see I put a winter hat on and got my gloves on. It is bitterly cold in the wind. It's all right in the tent, but I am cold. And I got wet feet as well because I had to walk across that bog over there. So, I'm going to get the kettle on. I think I'll start off with, well, I've got oxos, I've got soup, I've got coffee. Um, dinner tonight is another steak detective one, actually. I'll show you. It's the meatballs and pasta. I can feel the meatballs in there. So I'll have that a bit later on, but I think I might start off with soup. It is so cold up here. Even without the wind, it's really cold. And the clouds are just, I, I tried to just film it. I don't know if it managed it, but the clouds are like zerbing across. I'm still waiting on this soup. Of course, I brought the alcohol cooker, so when I wanted a quick drink, mm, I think I'll have a wander around instead of just sitting here. Ugh. See the clouds blowing through. So there must be a lot more wind down there than up here, although, you know, there is some wind, but not, not an enormous amount. Now, see, that's not on time lapse. Yeah, so all, all the hills to the west of me are uh, just, just gone. There's nothing down there at all. <laughs> Look, you should be able to see, no, absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, cool. It's uh, D-Day today, 6th of June. Yeah, I, I'm obviously I'm not old enough to remember the war. I was born about 10 years after it. But uh, when I first started working for a living, oh, yeah, when I first started working for a living, I was working with quite a lot of guys who fought in the war. And one chap I remember, uh, He'd been in a Japanese concentration camp for um, a good while. And he never ever sat down, never sat down because 
um, obviously when he'd been in the in the camps, they weren't allowed to sit down, and so he he just never sat down. So he you always eat his meals, and the same at home. His wife told me the same at home. Eat all his meals, stood up. Whatever he was doing, he was always stood up. And you shouldn't um, speak to him from behind or let out without letting him know you were coming because he would cower. I mean, it's frightening what, what they'd done to him, really. And this was, this is a good 30 years later, you know. It's terrible. Yeah, war, terrible thing. You see people, as soon as you get to camp, they'll blow up their sleeping mat, puff up their sleeping bag, and then, you know, get on with chores, I suppose, cooking dinner and all that sort of stuff. And I realised, because I'm in a Durston 1P, if I blow up the sleeping mat, it basically fills up 95% of the tank. So I've got to sit on it and it, you know, just gets in the way. I mean, I can leave stuff lying around until I blow up the sleeping mat. So actually, I don't blow it up until after I've had my dinner and I'm just sort of chilling. Uh, I got my phone out. I've been uh, looking at the news. Uh, it's election time, of course. And I'm not going to bring politics in it too much, I promise. But one thing that's not been discussed at all lately, and I don't know whether it ever will, is right of access to places like this. And there's a story in The Guardian that says that our Crow Act, the Countryside Rights of Way, is it? Act, C-R-O-W, Act that was implemented, cost £69 million pounds to um, put together because all the civil servants had to, because it only, uh, it only allows access to certain types of land, like hills, moorland, coast, etc. So all those types of land had to be mapped. And then all the landowners' objections and appeals and everything had to be dealt with. It cost 69 million quid over the course of a parliament where the Scottish Right to Roam Act, which basically just says you've got a right to roam as long as you're not on Ar is it arable farming land, private gardens, um, only cost 11 million. So it's actually a lot, lot, lot cheaper to let us have access to the land with a right to roam than it is to, to monitor what we got now. Mind you, I haven't seen some of the things that you see, you know, around the lakes, on the low parts of the lakes. You do wonder whether, you know, you should have to take an exam or something before you're allowed out here because some people are just, you know, terrible. It's terrible. Dinner time. Meatballs and pasta. Ah, that didn't rip very well, did it? I shall have to cut that off, won't I? Haha. <laughs> as soon as I switch the camera on, blast of wind. I'm getting a bit of rain in as well. It's a bit awkward really, because I want to look at the view. I'm pretty sheltered, but not completely like, you know. I hate being cooped up in a tent in the summer. Decided to come out and have a look around anyway. It's boring sitting in a tent, isn't it? So, the view is getting worse by the minute. <laughs> Just me and the tent and a style. Just me, a tent and a style. Nothing to see at all. So I've checked the uh, weather forecast. It's still saying there's no rain. Now, to be fair, it's only a drizzle. Right, it's coming up to 10 o'clock. Obviously the sun set ages ago. Quite why it's so light, I don't really know. But really 10 o'clock. I think it's time to uh, get the bed together and maybe even get in it. <laughs> oh dear, it's cold. It did say feels like minus one. So, not arguing with that. I just realized I'm almost, 
I'm almost parked on the path. Oh, oh well. I'll be up now before any brave soul gets this far out. Especially in this way there. Now I've got a new sleeping bag. I bought this just before we went on the Cumbria Way and it's a it's an Alp kit uh, Sky High 500. I've got it in their sale. It's always the best way of buying things. It's a minus one sleeping bag and it has a more generous cut to the um, the taper than most sleeping bags. I've also got we've got these flex tail punk, uh, pillows that clips on to the mat that stops it sliding about and there we are there's bed made. So the rain didn't come to anything in the end a bit of spit for about 10 minutes clouds right down there there's absolutely no view I can't even see the top of Minas Moyle which is only 100 yards away uh, I haven't checked the weather yet but I, I doubt it's any better so anyway I've got my last brew I'll get my head down try and get some sleep um, I'll check the weather if there's a chance of a sunset a sunset sunrise I'll, uh, I'll set the alarm if not well, I won't bother, but I want to get off pretty early. I've got about, I don't know, about three miles back to the car. I've got to get down, down off the hill. Um, it basically follows the fence down and then at the bottom you cross the stile and then it goes down through beautiful old wood with, with the stream, waterfalls, all that. So I'll show you that on the way down. And then there's a bit of a drag along the road back to the car. Uh, yeah, so, anyway, I'm going to drink this, get my hair down, go to sleep, and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. Well, I didn't sleep at all well. Not at all. Uh, had this horrendous wind all night. Not particularly, you know, not like 40 miles an hour or anything but probably high 20s sort of high teens and then high 20 gusts but very very gusty and pretty pretty awful actually very very noisy even with this tent bang down to the ground as much as I can had a problem let me show you I've had, I've had to double guy the, the corners. So here, the line locks were slipping, mostly on the end facing into the wind. But uh, yeah, both of these, this wind end, windward, windward end, went. Uh, so I double pegged all of them. Basically, I just had to tie a knot in the end of the a cord round, round another peg and that seemed to work got rid of most of the flappy <laughs> but uh, no sunrise this morning well you know there was a sunrise but I couldn't see it because the whole place was clagged in I won't get too close to the edge or maybe I will <laughs> hills as far as you can see. If only there was a good view. Very hazy, very cloudy. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Right, I'll get the kettle on. I'll start packing up. So I say, there's rain forecast at seven. So if I can get packed up everything bar the fly by then, if it does come, I'll be ready. I've just got a wet fly to pack away then. 
can't believe it's June, it's so cold. Ay, ay. What's this? A Trek Protein Flapjack Cocoa Oat. So this is breakfast. Oh, it's broken already. Oh, the wind's dropped for a bit. Don't know how long that'll last though. Got this new piece of kit on a Durston's flick pulse. Incredibly light, just the right size for the tent, surprise, surprise. All packed up, ready to go. I'll just show you where I was. Just here, as you can see, no trace. In fact, I'm not even sure exactly where I was parked. So I'm gonna get home because I didn't have the best night's sleep ever. I think I finally got to sleep sometime after about three o'clock. 2.51, I remember looking at the watch and I woke up at quarter to five. So I've had next to naff or sleep really. So I better get home before the tiredness really kicks in because I got a three hour drive home. So beautiful Coombe, unfortunately you can't really see it in all its majesty. But uh, yeah, it's lovely. You can see the main path going up to the left and up round the ridge, around the left of the Chlin. But if you go around the right of the Chlin, then there's a stone chute, as I said, that goes up to the col, the buch, between Penegader and Craigigai. I think it's Kai, C-A-U, is that Kai? as in Dolgathlai. I should maybe take some, uh, find someone who knows the names of all these things and give me a bit of Welsh, a bit more Welsh. <laughs> anyway, let's get on down. Ah, this is shit. Not good. Ah, this is what you're up against. Stay on, not worry. Ah, this is better, isn't it? This is better. I don't know how far it goes, though. <laughs> we'll see. This wasn't here last time I came. I love the way that they're infilling in between the big rocks with slate. Isn't that brilliant? It's not something I've seen anywhere else. Well done, lads. Lasses. It's a bit never-ending, this. Oh, and there's the rain coming. Bugger. Right, when you get to the bottom of the staircase, there's another one. <laughs> Over the stile and on down. I tell you, who was ever making these staircases is bloody good at the job. So this fence here that I've been following down, that marks the start of the National Nature Reserve, the Cadaridris National Nature Reserve. So this side of the fence, it's fine. The other side, they don't really want you camping because there's all sorts of precious plants and wildlife over there. I mean, it's, it's cold and it's wet and it's windy, but it's also beautiful. Here's a nice touch that they put the grid reference of the style on the style. So if you don't know where you are, the style tells you. Such a cool bridge. I thought I'd go over it three times, just for you. I think I'll wrap it up here. I've just got to walk down through the wood, back along the road. It's a lovely wood though, so I will take some pictures, bit of video for you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. If you've enjoyed the video, Please like, and if you like the channel, please subscribe. Press the little bell thing. It's not something I say very often, but I'm told that it helps. Anyway, time to start worrying about whether the car's still there. Try and find some breakfast. Thanks for watching, I'll see you again soon.
Bye. See you again.